Professional Development Module 1, Formal and Informal Feedback by Tracy Kreitz. Feedback is information given that talks about the lesson at hand and how things are developing. There is informal, where you could just mention it to the students as they're working or writing on the paper, as they finish an assignment, and then there's formal, which is like an assessment and data collection. Frequently, the advice given is given to specific students as a way to rate their performance and give recommendations on how they can improve and how finding out how their learning is progressing. When giving feedback, you should make sure that it is an encouraging in an encouraging format so that it encourages the students to think for themselves and allows them to look back on what they're learning and figure out if they need to change how they're going about solving the problems that have been set before them. Giving feedback, teachers are given the opportunity to guide and direct the students and reteach them at the same time. If they model what the, te what the teacher wants the student to see, then the student will be given the skills that they need to become independent and be able to work independently. And once they're doing independent work, they should then be able to self-assess and provide feedback to their peers. Informal feedback happens at any time, and it can take place right as the learning is happening and during the activity or lesson. When you do an informal feedback, you should make sure that you are interacting with the students so that you are acting more as like a coach and guiding them through the aspects of the lesson and that you're encouraging them while you're giving them this feedback, which should help them through the learning process. Student peer feedback. When students share their opinions about the student's work or the lessons with each other, that's the peer feedback. In this era of students dis student discourse and student-led instruction, students can learn to give quality feedback to their peers. It provides the students with opportunities to give and receive feedback that they understand and maybe appreciate more than they would from the teacher. Uh, during this time, you should use a feedback rubric to help guide the feedback. Uh, you can, a, a feedback rubric focuses more on helping the students using the right vocabulary and it helps them form their own useful on-level feedback. Student self-feedback. In order to create great work, students need to know what great work looks like. Anchor charts around the room and rubrics for grading and feedback should be available to them to help them self-assess. This is very important. Teachers need to show and teach students how to use the feedback rubrics and the grading rubrics to determine the next steps and set goals. The teachers need to allow time for self-feedback and reflection as a whole group to model how it's done. Whether talking about syntax, tone, or grammar. Students need to know the vocabulary specific to this lesson to be able to use the grading rubric to access their own work. We as teachers need to ensure that we all use common vocabulary. A student who is able to do self-feedback and adjust their learning has become an independent learner. You need to always make sure that you use constructive feedback. There's negative feedback. The corrective comments about past behavior focuses on behavior that wasn't successful and shouldn't be repeated. Positive feedback, affirming comments about past behavior, focus on, on behavior that was successful and should be continued. Negative feed forward, corrective comments about future performance, focus on behavior that should be avoided in the future and positive feed forward, affirming comments about future behavior, focusing on behavior that will improve performance in the future. 
Special thanks to Federation University Australia for this information. Now we're on to formal feedback. This is also known as assessments. Assessments is a formal, formal judgment as to the quality of a student's performance. Feedback is required before students can progress or feel capable of progressing. Special thanks to the Federation University Australia for this information. Uh, the type of formal feedback is summative feedback. The goal of summative feedback is to evaluate student learning at the end of an instructional unit by comparing it against some standards or benchmarks. Summative feedback contains detailed comments from the teachers that is related to the lesson or the assignment that they're doing. It makes sure that it kindly explains how the student was graded on the assignment or the lesson and how they can improve for next time. Professional Development Module Number 2, Objectives, by Tracy Kreitz. Objectives. Objectives are specific, actionable targets that need to be achieved within a smaller time frame, such as a year or less, to reach a certain goal. Objectives describe the actions or the activities involved in achieving a goal. I would like to thank the Federal Government Distance Learning Association for the definitions. One type of objective is the instructional objectives. An instructional objective is a statement that will describe what the learner will be able to do after completing the instruction. Student will be able to identify a noun student will be able to identify an adjective. Instructional objectives are specific. They're measurable. They're short term. And they're able to be observed by the teacher through either student behavior or, or student vocabulary. Uh, they indicate the desired knowledge and skills that we're hoping the students get from the lesson. I would like to thank the Federal Government Distance Learning Association for the definitions. Terminal objectives is another type of objectives. Terminal objectives are the skills that a learner will be able to perform once an entire unit or course is complete. Terminal objectives express what the learners will be able to do upon finishing the lesson. The termination objectives should be created for each, the each of the tasks addressed in the lesson. The objective should be focused on the level that the task is supposed to be accomplished. Each written objective should include a task, a condition, and a standard. The task is what the student is doing. The condition is what the environment will be like where they're doing the task. And the standard is what the level the task should be done at. I would like to thank the Federal Government Distance Learning Association for the definitions. Another type of objective is the enabling objective, which follows the terminal objective. Enabling objectives are derived from the terminal objective and are more detailed by defining the specific performance and or knowledge of the learner. Enabling objectives define specific, measurable outcomes that must be mastered in order to satisfy the terminal objective. Enabling objectives are supporting objectives for terminal objectives. They are created by analyzing the terminal objective their purpose is to break down the terminal objective into more manageable objectives. They need to state the expectations of the learner's performance, what's expected of them. They need to define the skills the students will need and the knowledge and behaviors that the students will need to have in order to be considered masters of the lesson. Enabling objectives will need to address 
a component of the terminal objective and help track the student's progress. The enabling objective should outline the lesson plan and follow the steps necessary for a student to gain a new skill and the knowledge that helps them reach the standard level, the performance level that the teacher has set for them to achieve. I would like to thank the Federal Government Distance Learning Association for the definitions.